Hello everybody! All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over what GCF is. So what is GCF? GCF is the greatest common factor. It's basically the largest value that can evenly divide into one or more values. Let's look at some examples. What is the GCF for 12 and 16? Well, let's think about it. What are certain, some numbers that can divide into 12 that can also divide into 16? Some of the numbers that might come to your head is two. You might even think four. Okay, between two and four, which one would be considered the largest number? Yep, it's four. And when I say what is the largest number that can divide into, basically what I'm saying is, if I was to take the first value, which is 12, and divide it by four, will I get a whole number without a decimal? I surely will. If I take the second number and I divide it by four, would I get a whole number without a decimal? I absolutely will. So therefore, my GCF will be four. Let's look at another example. Between negative three and negative six, what is the largest number that can divide into both of them? Well, we know that negative three can divide into both of them. Is there any other number larger than that? And if some of you are thinking negative six, well, that cannot be the case. Because, just like I did in the previous one, when I say divide into, I'm basically saying take that first value and try to divide it by what you think the GCF is. If you do negative three divided by negative six, that equals 0 0.5, which is a decimal. Doesn't mean that it divides into it evenly. But if I try to divide it by negative three, we all know negative three divided by negative three is one, no decimal. Also, if I take negative six and divide it by negative three, it gives me two, no decimal. So therefore, my GCF has to be negative three. Now, when it comes to variables, it's slightly different because all you're doing is choosing the variable with the smallest exponent. So between x squared and x to the fifth power, x squared would be the smallest exponent. So x squared would be considered my GCF, and that's simply because x squared can be divided into both of these values. As you can see, x squared divided by x squared gives me one, and x to the fifth divided by x squared gives me x to the third, because you have to remember, you subtract your exponents. All right, now, when you have something like negative three x squared and negative six y to the fifth, you're looking at finding the GCF in two separate ways. First, focus on the numbers, then the variables. Between negative three and negative six, my GCF would be negative three. And this should be an x, not a y. Between x squared and x to the fifth, which one is the smallest variable? x squared. So therefore, my GCF will be negative 3x squared. Let's try this again. Between 24 and 10, what is the largest number that can divide into both of them? Absolutely right. It's 2. And between the variable y cubed and y to the 7th, which one is the smallest variable? In other words, with the smallest exponent. Yep, y to the power of 3. So my GCF will be 2y to the power of 3. And sometimes your GCF can be one because between two and three, the largest number that can divide into both of those is a one. Now, I know we always ask, okay, which one is the smallest variable? Nah, uh uh. In this particular example, both of them do not have a variable. So you wouldn't even ask that question. So my GCF would just be one. And that's it. 